The most fundamental of antennas is the dipole. A half-wave dipole's simplicity and efficiency is often unmatched. With not much more than a resonant length of wire and a center point of some sort, the dipole is the building block that all other antennas are based on. But the downside of the dipole is that it is primarily a mono or single banded antenna. If you want to change band, you need to change antennas. There is an easy way to overcome that, and that is with adding links. Link dipole antennas add breakpoints along the antenna's radiator so that by engaging or disengaging the links, you can turn a 40 meter dipole into a 30 meter dipole or a 20 meter dipole antenna. And with that, we have Chameleon's AZ2 link dipole antenna. The AZ2, sold exclusively at DX Engineering, is a three-band link dipole antenna. It is approximately 66 feet long, so it is a resonant on the 40-meter band. Along with this length, the antenna has two sets of links or breakpoints, one at the 30-meter point in the resonant spot and another at the 20-meter resonant spot. These points allow you to easily change the antenna from a resonant 40-meter dipole to a 30 or 20 meter resonant antenna. Designed for portable use, the AZ2 or Activation Zone Model 2 antenna is perfect for parks on the air, POTA or summits on the air, soda activations. The antenna is rel relatively lightweight at about one and a half pounds and is ruggedly constructed out of lightweight Kevlar enforced wire. Uh, the center feed point features a BNC connection. The link points are constructed out of heavy duty alligator clips Power handling is a 100 watt sideband and 50 watt CW and the data modes. Included in the AZ2 kit is the antenna itself, three wire winders, 50 feet of lightweight paracord, a bongo tie, and two metal tent pegs. Everything packs into the included zipper pouch. The antenna can be deployed in an inverted V fashion using the tree or lightweight portable mast. The ends can be staked to the ground or you can use two additional pieces of rope to tie the ends off at trees. But how does the Chameleon AZ2 link dipole antenna operate? Well, let's put it on the air and find out. conditions were challenging while testing the antenna. 20 meters was turbulent and a DX contest swamped the phone portion of the band. I spent most of my time on FT8 to escape the noise. Performance was good. With only 20 watts of power, I was easily making contacts with little or no repeats, even though the FT8 window was very crowded. Overall, I made over 100 contacts the weekend on the 20, 30, and 40 meter bands. So what do I think about Chameleon's AZ2 link dipole antenna? Well, as a dipole antenna, it performs as expected. <laughs> really, uh, you're, you know, with a straight dipole, you're not going to get you know, any worse or any better performance than any other straight dipole. So uh, performance you know, is on par with a dipole antenna. Uh, link is, this particular model is a linked dipole antenna, so it offers you the choice of three different bands. Three different bands. Um, you get the with both of these links engaged, you get the 40 meter band. If I pop one of these links out, you get the 30 meter band. And then the, the, the third link is, well, well, 
uh, make this antenna resonant on the 20 meter band. I find it really interesting that it's, it's giving us a 30 meter option for this dipole antenna, whereas I would think that maybe something that was 40, 20, and 17 meters may be more appealing to people. But I could be wrong. I, I see the advantages of it, especially if you're the kind of person that really favors CW and digital operation because that's what the 30 meter band is going to give you. So 40, 30, and 20 meters might be a, a really good um, band choice if, if that's what you're into for POTA parks on the air or SOTA summits on the air type operation. And that's, the, and that's what this antenna market is geared towards, POTA and SOTA. It's relatively lightweight. Everything is packed into this carrying case here. Uh, the antennas, uh, you've got some uh, stakes to anchor it. Uh, you get, you get a, a length of rope to deploy it. Uh, typically what you could do with this antenna is uh, say if you carried a lightweight uh, 7 meter carbon fiber or uh, fiberglass mass, you could use it. There's 7 meters, 23 feet. You could use that to lift the end point of the antenna up and then anchor it down in a, in a V-shape uh, with, the, with, the, with, the with the ground spikes so that you can carry your one, you know, your, your center support with you and you wouldn't need to look for extra trees or something like that to um, deploy this antenna. I've had this up over the weekend. Uh, we were camping and uh, our campsite's a little bit, <laughs> it's a little bit tight, uh, but I was able to make it um, work and it worked very well. Uh, one thing I found with this antenna is that its sweet spot is probably at about that 23 to 25 foot height. Uh, when I first deployed it, I had it a little bit low, about 18, 20 feet, and uh, the SWR, especially on the 20 meter band, was higher than it was expected. When I was able to get it raised, the center point raised up about another three or four feet, uh, they made all the difference in the world, especially on the 20 meter band. Now, it could be my location, or it could be just the way in which the antenna was interacting uh, with the ground itself. So keep that in mind that um, if you're going to want to put this antenna up, you know, especially for 20 meters, try to get it up a little bit higher in that 23 to 25 foot range, ideally. So, um, but otherwise it, 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 it worked very well. Uh, <laughs> I focused primarily on a digital operation with the antenna just because the band conditions were not so conducive to phone operations. And the weekend we were out here, um, when I was evaluating it, the antenna, there's a, a, a a DX contest on the air and it just made that 20 meter band just really painful <laughs> with all of the with all of the contesters about uh, for my POTA activation but uh, nonetheless I'm genuinely impressed with the antenna I like link dipole antennas I think that um, you know we're at the top of the solar cycle but we need to but with the solar activity the way it is it's it's just so turbulent uh, we want we want to think about efficient antennas and a dipole antenna is certainly going to be an efficient antenna so a great choice in that regards um, I do and like I said uh, worked very well for me um, we're going to probably be you know as as we go back down the solar cycle we'll probably be seeing uh, more uh, you know dipole type antenna deployments out there just because of their their overall efficiency so this is the chameleon uh, AZ2 a link dipole antenna 40 30 and 20 meter bands it is available exclusively from dxengineering.com so check out the AZ2 at dxengineering.com uh, questions or comments about this antenna leave them down below I'd love to hear what you think about uh, chameleons AZ2 link dipole antenna um, otherwise, uh, if you enjoy this kind of, this type of content, like and subscribe helps me out a whole lot. Uh, but um, uh, thanks for, again for watching. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. You have a great day in 7.3.